Hello math class, welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson four, angle properties in polygons. As you can see, uh, thank you for sticking with it throughout this entire unit. This is the last one of the unit. Uh, congratulations, one down, a few more to go. You can do it. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do is a few times I'm going to show you what I have in my booklet as I've already kind of filled out some tables and things um, that you can see. So uh, at that time, you might want to just pause it and copy down what I have there, and then you'll be able to listen intently to the explanation, uh, or you can attempt to do it all at the same time. But sometimes I might, in this section where I've already got it all written down, I may unintentionally go too fast for you to uh, copy it all down. So you maybe need to go back or pause it and then listen carefully. So we're gonna show this first part here. already done the table I figure why do it again right so first of all we'll explore a little bit um, or a term a convex polygon is any shape that is all like less than 180 degree side so it might have a flat side but it can't like jut in and then jut out again uh, to make a weird uh, angle I essentially um, you know I'll have an interior area that is unencumbered by any juts or jagged parts. Um, these are some obvious ones listed, triangle, quadrilateral, pentagon, and things like that. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to um, explore a pentagon and its interior angles. So uh, a pentagon has three right angles uh, and four sides equal length. What is the sum of the measure of the angles in a pentagon? So I kind of drew a pentagon um, and then I broke it up into a square and a triangle just to try to make it uh, as clear as I could. Uh, so within the square, the interior angles of the square are 360 degrees and 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 90 and the angles within the triangle are 180 and you can see if you add them all up, uh, you would get 540 total. Um, so you can draw different shapes with other shapes. So like a, a hexagon could be six triangles. Um, and then you would be able to find out like what the interior angles, the sum of all the angles, uh, the interior of that shape would be. So we already know from um, like experience that for a triangle with three sides, uh, it has one triangle within it, obviously, and it is 180 degrees, uh, all the angles add up to that in a uh, quadrilateral, which is simply like a square like this or any rectangle. Uh, you could break this up into two triangles with a line like this. We would have a triangle here and a triangle here. Uh, and we have the sum of the angles we already measured to be 360, 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 90. Uh, we found out that a pentagon has 540 for interior angles. There are uh, five sides to a pentagon. You can break it up into three triangles. Believe me, you can. If we have one up here, we draw another line here like this to the box. We have one, two, three, uh, for, and we have 540. We can follow this pattern. Uh, a hexagon has six sides, would have four triangles to be uh, 720 degrees total. A heptagon, which is seven sides, could have five triangles, 900 degrees, and an octagon, eight sides with six triangles, 100, uh, 1,080 degrees. So we have a relationship here. What we're going to do next together is we are going to show how we are going to do that. So that's A, okay? So A, make a conjecture about the relationship between the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a polygon and the number of sides. So let's see. Um, what we can see from our uh, table here is that the number of sides um, is two more than the number of triangles that we can make in that shape. If we have seven sides, we can make five triangles. If we have six sides, we can make four triangles. So the number of triangles is equal to uh, number of sides minus two, right? So it is seven sides, five triangles. Uh, and we know that we have 180 degrees for uh, added up each time we have a triangle. So 180 degrees for every
every triangle. So if I know the number of sides of a shape, which you can sometimes find out from the name, uh, I should be able to find out the angles, right? Because if I know that n, the number of sides, subtract 2, is equal to, this would be the number of triangles. And every time we have a triangle, we multiply it by 180 degrees. That will give us the total, or s, the sum of the interior angles. So we have a new equation. I'll rewrite it the other way here. S is equal to 180 times n minus 2. If I know this shape has 10 sides, I can find out what the sum of the interior angles are. 10 minus 2 times 180. And that is true for any uh, convex polygon, any shape that has 180 degrees uh, angles or less. For B, Use the conjecture to predict the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a dodecagon. So the dodecagon has 12 sides. So the sum is equal to 180 times, so this would be A, I'll write that up here, sorry, and then this would be B. 180 uh, times the number of triangles. So we have 180 times 12 minus 2. 12 minus 2 is 10 times 180, the sum would be 1800 degrees. The sum of the interior angles for a, do, uh, a dodecagon with 12 sides would be 1800 degrees. We should be able to apply this to any shape with any number of sides. It doesn't, even, doesn't have to be a regular shape, I don't believe. So again, just to um, reiterate here, I, I believe I'll bring this up. Uh, if we were to draw a rectangle, as I've done in my diagram here, and find out what the interior and exterior angles added up to be, I would find them to be the exterior angles to be 360, right? Um, if I have 90 degrees here, the other outside one would also be 90 degrees, and I have four of them for a total of 360. Angles in a triangle are 120, 120, 120 for exterior angles, if the interior angles are 60, for a total of 360 as well. Um, I didn't do it specifically for a pentagon, because I'm not 100% sure just uh, of what the numbers are off the top of my head, but I can pretty much guarantee you that they will equal 360. And the reason that no matter what shape we have, the exterior angles equal 360, is because they have to make their way in a triangle. We don't add, or sorry, a circle. We don't add them all together, making them larger and larger. They have a definite shape, a definite um, distance to cover. A circle is 360 degrees, therefore the exterior angles of any shapes will be 360 degrees. And I will prove it to you below. So. I don't know, I didn't leave a whole ton of space, so just a heads up, you'll have to write a little bit smaller uh, than maybe you're used to. So this is going to be kind of a large uh, area, uh, a large question here. So we're gonna make a conjecture about the exterior angle sums for a pentagon. Essentially, I'm going to prove to you that it doesn't matter what the shape is, uh, the exterior angles equal 360. So um, we have angles V and A that are next to each other. We have B and W, so I'm not going to point to them each time. I'm just going to write them out. So I have angle V, I know, to be 180 degrees subtract angle A. I know that to be true. Angle W is equal to 180 degrees subtract B. Angle C, pardon me, X, is equal to 180 degrees subtract C. We have y is equal to 180 degrees subtract d, and z is equal to 180 degrees subtract e. Uh, I also, what, so what I wanna do is I wanna find out what the sum of v, w, x, y, and z are. So uh, the sum that I'm looking for is equal to v plus w plus x plus y plus z. Now what I'm going to do using the transitive property is every time I see a V, I'm going to plop in 180 degrees minus A. And essentially what I'm doing is I am relating the exterior, some of the exterior angles 
to the interior angles, of which I know for a fact what they are. So I can take this and say the sum is equal to uh, 180 minus A plus 180 minus B plus 180 minus C, 180 minus D, and I'll go to another line, plus 180 minus E. Okay, I can then uh, factor out my letters. Okay, I'm gonna factor out A, B, C, D, and E onto this side, uh, and I'm going to be left with five 180s, uh, added them up, that's 900. So 900, that's all the 180s added together, subtract A plus B plus C plus D plus E. Right? After I've factored out the 180 and factored them out apart, and I've added the 180s together to get 900, this is what I have. And I know that in a pentagon, these together equal 540 degrees, right? The interior angles of a pentagon I've already proved to you is 540 degrees. So 900 subtract 540 is equal to 360 degrees right here. So I've proven that the exterior angles are 360 degrees. Let's go to the next example here. All right. So we have another regular polygon. This one is going to be a gazebo. And we are talking about using a regular hexagon. Hexagon has six sides, so six sides, yes. That is a horrible hexagon, but you get the idea. If all the sides were the same length, all the angles were exactly the same, we would have a perfect hexagon. I'd actually need to draw that, because what we're doing is we're determining the measure uh, of each interior angle. Uh, so I know that the sum of the interior angles of a hexagon is equal to, sum is equal to 180 times the number of sides, which is 6 subtract 2. So 180 times 4 equals 720 degrees. And since I have 6 total angles, I'm going to take the 720 degrees, divide it by 6 to get 120 degrees each. That would be for each interior angle. This is 120, 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 even though it doesn't necessarily look like it in my drawing, but I promise you it is. Okay? The next one is your turn. So I'd like you to pause it here, and uh, when you're done, unpause it, and you can see if you got it correct. So this one wants us to determine the interior angles of a 15-sided polygon. So the sum is equal to 180 times 15 subtract 2. That would be 180 times 13. Uh, that equals 2,340 degrees. Go ahead and use your calculator for that. 180 times 13. And then we divide that by the total number of sides, 15 sides to get 156 degrees each. So each interior angle would be 156 degrees. We have one more problem to do together, and then we'll unleash you to study for the test. So, visual tessellations. You might be able to hear our puppy. If we make it through this last problem, I will show her to you. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Uh, we have a floor tiler designs custom floors using tiles in the shapes of regular polygons. Uh, can the tiler use congruent regular octagons and congruent squares to tile the floor if they have the same side length? So essentially what I wanna do is I wanna find out like if they fit together and if they fit together, they would equal 360 degrees like a circle okay she wants me to show her to you now so you've made it this far this is Stevie she's the best puppy ever we've been really quiet for like four videos and she's getting restless at me we're gonna go for a walk after this but uh, yeah 
Say hi, Stevie. Hi. Hi. I'm so annoyed. So cute. Okay. So maybe she'll stop squeaking. Um, maybe not. Actually, what I'm gonna I'm gonna take the squeak. I know. I know. But just for a couple minutes. Okay. Okay. So where was I? I know that the way that the tiles need to fit together has to equal 360 degrees as they need to kind of complete a circle even though there is no circular angles. So I need to find out uh, the sum of or the each angle that is in an octagon and in a square. So the sum for an octagon is equal to 180 uh, multiplied by the octagon is eight sides subtract two. So that is 1080 divided by eight sides, right, in an octagon. Uh, so that would equal 135 degrees each. And I already know that each angle in a square uh, is 90 degrees. So um, angle in square, those are 90 degrees each. So what I really want to do now is I want to see if I can find out uh, a combination of octagons and squares that will equal 360 degrees. Uh, and I can kind of see one quickly. If I take two of the octagons and one of the squares, this would be 270 degrees and this would be 90 degrees for a total of 360. So if we get 360, those will fit together. And I'll try to draw a picture here of what I mean by it, okay? So, I'll leave this here. I'll try to draw this picture. So if I have a square in the middle, and I'm going to use octagons to try to fill in each space to make it completely even. So again, I don't have the greatest drawing skills, but. That is an octagon there. And then I have an octagon here, right? And then I have an octagon here and an octagon here. You can see how, even though my drawings, this should be straight, but even though my drawings are pretty brutal, you can see how this actually does fit together. 90 plus 135 plus 135 equals 360. So because uh, the interior angles of the shapes in a way can equal 360, they will fit together and you can make a tiled floor this way. So uh, the answer here would be yes, he can use uh, two octagons and one square. Okay. So below, there are some good need to know things. Definitely check those out. I have our um, formulas in it, some things that are useful to know and how to find out what in each interior angle is. You take our the total uh, interior angle and you divide it by the number of sides uh, and just any exterior angles are equal to 360. If you have any questions while you're studying for the test, please, please let me know. Uh, I'd be happy to help you over in class or over email or on Google Meet, if that's what you would like. And me and Stevie, me and Stevie would like to say goodbye until we have unit, <laughs> we have unit three and four uh, that are together that are next. So unit three and four, even though it's two units, only has one test. Uh, thanks so much for watching everyone. And we will see you soon. Okay, bye.